Recently, I took the biggest L of my writing career. It made me question my worth as a human being, so let me tell you all about it. If you don't want to sit through the whole story, do please check out the announcement at the end. It's marked in the timestamps. Anyway, here goes. Mark Lawrence, what up? exalted author of Prince of Thorns, the Book of the Ancestor Trilogy, which I loved, and many other greatly enjoyable books, is the mastermind behind a yearly contest for self-published novels called SPFBO, the Self-Published Fantasy Blog-Off, or SPOOFBO, as I keep yelling every time I encounter it. Ten different fantasy blogs review and grade books, each blog picks a finalist, and then together they arrive at a winner. The grand prize is a bit unconventional, but immensely coveted by all contestants. A vial of the immortal blood of Helgundr, Sunder of the Wild, whose Elysian essence bestows the wisdom of Tarin Fey for ages untold. And also, it comes with a big publicity boost for the novel. The contest has gotten bigger and bigger for the years, and this time around, there was a total of 300 fantasy novels, so there's 30 for each blog that participate. The Last of the Wicked was one of those novels. I submitted it with great pride. It was assigned to like The Fantasy mouse. Hive, a group of five reviewers who go through several rounds through the year. They do a first round reading up to the 20% mark of each of the 30 books. They arrive at a quarter finalist this way, and then they decide on semi-finalist and then a finalist that they put forward as their proper pick for the contest. I wasn't positive my novel would be picked as a finalist. There's a lot of factors that can go into that decision, but I was confident that I would make it pretty damn far because I know, I know, The Last of the Wicked is so far above average with meticulously constructed prose and production values that are above most published work today. And that's, that's just a fact. And I'm not gonna mince words here. Most of the novels that get tossed out on the first round are hot garbage. I've attempted to read some of them, you know, to gauge the competition, and it was like trying to grade papers for a special needs class. You just, you want to give them a star sticker and congratulate them for bashing 10 words together. So when I got tossed out in the first round alongside all the garbage, discarded like all the leftover body parts after you build your flesh golem, I was... Uh, I was a bit distraught. Listen, I, I'm not gonna pretend I'm not resentful. I think you'd have to be made of stone not to take this at least a little personal. These people hurt me. <laughs> it's like I sent my kid to a pageant and the judges made me watch as they took turns to piss on my child. I truly believe if they'd read the whole book that they had regretted the dismissal. But I get it. I understand their situation. I don't blame them. And what they're doing truly is a service. Don't ever mistake it. They're not the point of the video. The point of the video is that the experience was crushing. Man, what a hard pill to swallow. Now, I could ignore it and convince myself there's nothing wrong with the book if it were just one person who states I couldn't stimulate. But this was five critics who were unanimous in saying, it doesn't start well and I'm not hooked to keep going. Five people whose vocation is to critique fantasy novels and they're all saying I didn't do it right. I can't ignore it. At first, just like any time anyone ever receives criticism on something they're extremely invested in, I was disbelieving and defensive because, you see, I didn't go in looking for criticism. In my hubris, I went in looking to dazzle. So I was like, this is all news to me. I had no idea. What the hell are you talking about? What's your problem? Are you stupid? It's because I wasn't woke enough for you, isn't it? How can you possibly... Not appreciate the sheer quality of my novel! <clears throat> the stages of grief marched on. And soon it set in. And, and it kept setting in. And it set in real hard. To the point, the point I was blackpilled for a little while because, holy shit, I thought this book was great. 
from start to end. If I am capable of misjudging the quality of what I write so fundamentally, what hope do I have? I spent the last 20 years, the last 20 years, very seriously trying to improve my craft and be the best writer I can be. I decided I'm going to dedicate myself, all my free time, my hobby. I'm going to kind of ignore a lot of the other hobbies that I have cultivated. I'm going to concentrate on becoming a really good writer. I don't know if I'll ever be the greatest to ever live, but I'm going to be good. I'm going to make it the best I can possibly be. And this is what I had to show for it. Really? What the f... What's the damn point? What's the damn point? Spent a few days wallowing and digesting this ego-destroying development. Rebuilding all the make-believe that keeps me going forward in this endeavor because the road to a writer's future is paved with delusions. And I realized... I knew. I knew about this. I knew the start of the novel wasn't good enough. After I submitted it, I was worried the critics would only go up to 20% because I knew the real good stuff all happens later. And I've been told too. Let me show you. Look at this review. Did you start? Look at this other review. It agrees. Did you start? Gr gets, gets awesome, but it starts bad. <laughs> they're telling me, they're telling me right here, another person who tried the novel, she said she couldn't get past the first chapter because of the obnoxious kids. They just put her off completely. So, I knew. But I told myself at the time, eh, it's alright. They just need to stick with it. They'll realize the novel is actually amazing. But a huge chunk of readers don't do that. If they are put off by a beginning, they simply stop reading. And even if they keep reading, I've already poisoned the seed of their goodwill. And The Last of the Wicked has one big poison seed at the very start, and that's the obnoxious children that Meredith summons through their portal. They're a holdover from the very conception of the novel, when my aim was to tell a story much more focused on the comedy and not the heart-wrenching drama that ended up developing. I made the children obnoxious on purpose. I, I went out of my way to make them annoying, so then you get the payoff of their unceremonious banishment. And oh, wait a minute. The novel isn't about the kids. It's about the witch. But here's the thing. Nah. I'm annoying you on the first chapter. Why? Why do that? The juice ain't worth the squeeze. So I changed it. This is the third edition of The Last of the Wicked. Now also available in a gorgeous, if disturbing, hardcover with a new cover designed to match, painted by yours truly as usual. I tried to make it both beautiful and disturbing, something that kind of bothers you, but hopefully in an intriguing way. And I chose to go without the dust jacket on this one. I've never really liked dust jackets. They're so damn cumbersome. They get in the way all the time when you're trying to actually read the hardcover edition. And this, this is actually cheaper, so, you know, even better. The change lock for this third edition is far too long to cover exhaustively, but it's all minor. It's it's not a rewrite, it's still the same story. It simply addresses a lot of the problems at the start. It deletes a bit of unnecessary chaff here and there. It fleshes out Gallivan with world building that I'd already done in my head, but I'd never put on the page. It moves the appendices to the front, so you're aware of their existence before you start the book and all the work that was done to make a believable actual world to tell a story in, it adds a lot of new interest to the glossary, it adds a couple mini plot points to move the story better, it rephrases some bad grammar and corrects the last few straggling typos, and most importantly, it does away with the obnoxious children in favor of something that actually supports the story and Meredith's role. Of course, these modifications have ripples that must be felt throughout the book, so you'll find little changes all the way to the end. If you have the digital version on Kindle, if you already bought it, the file is already updated and you, all you need to do is delete and re-download for the update to happen. If you have a physical copy, well, now you own an extremely rare second edition treasure. Or when I inevitably become ultra rich and mega famous, <laughs> go ahead and complete your collection with this beauty. This disturbing, haunting beauty. By the way, if you're wondering, the first edition was the initial Indiegogo release, which had far too many typos for my peace of mind. 
Either way, join my mailing list. I'm doing one of those now, and I literally email you a copy of the ebook as appreciation for your attention span. I promise to only contact you when there's something new and shiny coming out, and I'll try to keep the inappropriate sexual advances to a minimum. And as usual, the best thing you can do to help me out if you feel so inclined is to write a review on Amazon or even Goodreads. Self-publishers live and die by that all-consuming, coveted social proofing. In the, on the other hand, if your aim is to hurt me as much as possible, you can leave a bad review eviscerating the book. My crippling insecurities will make certain I obsess over every terrible thing you say. So. Let me know what you think about all this, because as you can see, and it's regretful in some ways and a good thing in others, I do care. I care about the opinion of strangers enough to make me spend three months of my life working on something I had no plans to do. I thought this book was all done and sealed into the vault. Hopefully now it is, but who knows what your comment might drive me to undertake. I look forward to whatever comes next.